Friday the 13th. Yee! I don't know. It's a good day for me because my dentist is going to see me. I can't wait to get in and see. Um, let me get people going in here. See all my buddies. We are trained. We are trained to start at 10 o'clock sharp Pacific time. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for down there. Um, so last night was, uh, well, yesterday was Adair's birthday, 39. Ah, what does that make me? 49? No. And it was really sweet because it was super low key. Nobody was really there but us. But the kids felt so sure that she needed party prize. A, we need a party prize. So this was our... <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, so we're all doing this, and <laughs> it was it was fun. I love I love my family. I'm so lucky. So um, again, today's Friday the 13th. The reason it's a good day for me is I had to cancel my dentist appointment when I had to jam up to Mendocino, and they couldn't schedule me till July. And they called yesterday. Can you come in today at two o'clock? <laughs> yes, yes. I can come in today at two o'clock. So, oh, I just love seeing you guys so much. Um, so, Joey and Shelly are thinking about um, relocating to Nashville. And, uh, of course, I, you know, I'm sad to see if they decide to relocate. Of course, I'm sad because they're like, you know, seven hours away right now driving. But... I love Nashville. Um, although I will say Broadway today is not what Broadway was 10 years ago when we went. It's more like a frat party. But I asked um, Shelly if she liked country western. It was kind of, eh. well, better get used to it. So I thought I might say to ask um, A-L-E-X-A, -E I'm not going to say it out loud, to play K Keith Urban. Mm -hmm. That's what converted me right there. The best. So, Rochester, New York. I have a bunch of friends there. Um, and Pat said that's where they're moving to. So, hey, Margo. All right. We got a lot of stuff to do today. And one is blocking a quilt. And you can see that I did it behind me. And I kind of ran into some interesting obstacles. But first, let's talk about my notes. Well, here they are. <laughs> I got a um, note from Karen who is a teacher at Sonoma State, a doctor, actually, doctor, she has her doctorate, and she, her friend or something that works in the Bellina School District saw, um, saw the face that she did that we've all done. And by the way, Libby's show is coming up in a week and we're going to cover faces. But her friend said, can you come to Bellinas and help us make faces at, with the students. And so she was right there. And I love these. They are currently hanging in the classroom, but they're hoping to get it in the library. The fusing, and look at that with the little girl in her mask. And I hesitated to show this and then I realized, well, because there's a face mask on, it's fine. Um, because, um, the age they are, and I would like to guess that's probably third or fourth grade just by looking. The fusing didn't work so well, so they did gluing. And that is a Freddie Moran trick right there, right on. Just glue it. And and she said the kids painstakingly worked at it. I love this one because her the, the young lady's face mask kind of matches the fabric of her face. And then look at how she captured the sweatshirt. I'm not even sure that that isn't a real sweatshirt, to tell you the truth. And here's another one. Look at the gal's hair and then how she did it on the, the quilt. I mean, how amazing. What a fun introduction of getting kids into quilting. And the thing is, is, is that, you know, you could, I know each of these tells a story. Each, every single one does. Here's another one. Oh, I mean, so that's it from um, Karen. But Karen um, is 69. She put in her email, and it was a lovely email. And thank you so much. But she gave me a very high compliment. And 
I didn't know I did this, but I'll take it. And it was instead of perfection, when you're doing your thing, pursue joy. And, and, and that's working for her. And I think that's really interesting. And if I, if I, um, inspired you to think that I guess I'm smarter than I think I am, because isn't that the truth? Um, speaking of that yesterday, I took a class from, um, David Owen Hastings. It was offered through Mancuso and I don't know where the picture is in here. Um, I had a blast and I found it was a three hour class. I was still sewing at four o'clock and then finally I just go, Oh, I'm exhausted. And, but I found pure joy in sitting at my sewing machine and just creating. All right. So another person wrote, and I'm sorry, I forget your name and wanted to know if I could do a, a session on quilting, uh, quilting design. And I believe we did that way back. And so probably if you Googled or searched on our website beautifully and see if it comes up or if you say, if you say quilting, you're going to get 10,000 entries here. So maybe go for the keywords. Okay. <laughs> go for the keywords. Um, somebody wrote yesterday and they were going to do a little segment or a little show and tell on birthing a quilt and we couldn't find it on the site. It's called pillowcase, but I put birthing a quilt and I had 400 results because I think the word quilt was in there. So be as succinct as you can. We didn't index it properly. And Lilo, yeah, the team came through and we got it for you. And we are going to re-index it. Okay, so, so quilting. First of all, I'm going to show you um, Hariko and Mas, Masan, Masanobu, Masanobu's quilt that was in um, Paducah. Ricky said the quilts were phenomenal at, because, you know, the show hasn't aired for a couple years. And, and he said there were some categories where everybody could have easily gotten a blue ribbon easily. It was just excruciating. But what I want to say about quilting design, I wanted to start with this image because I want you to see just that background quilting design. I had a wood, sh a wood shop teacher back in the day, Dr. Cassay, and he said, I want you to be, be able to identify good quilting and not so great, qu or good woodworking, he was not a quilter, and um, not great, great woodworking. So in other words, when you're buying furniture, you know if you're getting good stuff or garbage. And so he said, look at everything. And I am commissioning you guys to look at everything because I am telling you this is the one thing that I don't think anybody can quite wrap their hands around except let's talk about, you know, uh, Amanda Murphy and Angela Walters. And on the quiltshow.com, we have tons of video about how different people approach it. And in fact, we just um, taped a show with Amanda Murphy and she, it hasn't aired yet, and she showed how to combine digitized quilting designs on your machine and mixing it with your own so it doesn't look like it's been digitized. And it, it knocked my socks off for sure. So let's go back to this quilt. Okay, here is the big picture. Here's the quilt. I mean, is that wonderful? But take a look like at the left-hand upper side. That is not just stippling that's going on there. There is some very um, intentive, intentive, intent, what would the word be? Intentional quilting going on there. So as, uh, you know, here's the face. And I can see here that what they did was kind of followed the skin, you know, so in the way it rounds around the cheek and things like that. And then look at that. The, uh, the, the, that those escape me first time through. So look at that, those little birdies. Now that's not quilted. That's obviously something that they stitch their brains out with. But when I first saw the quilt, that completely escaped me. And there they are. Oh, actually there's three. I mean, oh, the best. All right. And then, okay, on the forum, there has been a gremlin. 
with pictures and we understand that and I believe it's been fixed only to find out that now our email service is getting screwed up. And so uh, uh, several of you have contacted us and have said, um, I'm not getting my email. I'm not getting my email. Well, John has been working and Diane, I'm specifically talking to you and thanking you for bringing it up to us. Um, John is working with the server, but the thing you need to do, I mean, you shouldn't have to do this, but is go into your spam and look for us and 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 click on and accept us and that should take care of it i stopped getting ricky tim's emails i'm like going, was he mad at me i mean what's going on they were landing in my spam and so there's just so many things out there that can make that happen um so it's like if you want somebody who um who I don't know what that is. Um, um, if you want, if you don't spam people unless they really deserve it, just unsubscribe, okay? Because it really can screw things up for everybody. Wow. Okay. Here we go. Let me get back up to my pictures. So here we go. What I found in the, in the forum today. Look at what Janet did. It's beautiful. And I think the thing that really I love to pieces is if we go kind of to the upper left, not all the way to the left, but the upper, you've got the two corner blocks and come down kitty corner to the bottom to the right. Look at that piece of fabric. It's got both grays and neutrals in it. Score when you find things like that. So Janet, I'm glad you're in there going, what's going on? I don't know. All right, so this is what I did in David's class yesterday when I lost myself. It was so much fun. And then what I'm going to do, he showed how we we're supposed to make like little um, coaster things, but I'm going to make mine into a little wall hanging. And he showed how to do it. And I've never done it before. It's a gusset and I'm scared to death. So I'm going to practice on something. And then the other thing is he had us do slow, intentional stitching. And I can see some things I'm already going to have to switch around a little bit. Like those jacks on the right-hand side, the top and the bottom, they can't be like that. So that's one reason I love my design wall. All right, so this is what happened, taking a class here, and we are going to get to, get to blocking the quilt, um, was that I, I ended up with um, a mess, an absolute mess. And so I thought there's got to be, where's the picture of it? I hope I have it. There's got to be a way to sort out the mess because I'm sitting here working at my sewing machine. Um, we're cutting itty bitty little pieces of fabric and ironing and this and that and it exploded up here and I can't think when it exploded. So I got the little um, footstool that I often use when I'm demoing to put my camera on and I put this little basket in here so that I can just reach in and not have it have exploded all over my tabletop. Then I have my pins just nestled right up there to my machine. It's kind of a pain because I'm a left-hander, as you know, but they're right there. Because I don't know about you, you start, where is my stuff? I mean, it just gets lost. How can things get lost in an area that's 24 by 24? Can somebody just tell me? So then I used another footstool that I'm using right now to put my computer on, to put stuff on. And then I, I took the picture to show you, because that's the junk that really gets lost. And then doy, at the end of my sewing machine, I have a scissors holder that I put on. So right now I do have my um, Karen K. Buckley's hanging from that. Forgot it was even there. So that is the overall scene. Um, I also to the left hand side of my chair, I got that uh, TV tray either at Target or Walmart, I forget. And I had my son-in-law um, cut it as low as it could go so that when I'm pressing, I'm pressing coming down at it and not like going parallel to the table of it. And there's like a little pressing mat there. Um, and I don't have a picture of the original mess. I can't believe I don't have it. It was a disaster or it may pop up in here somewhere surprise the mess it's like when I end a quilt 
I have to um, clean up my mess or when I go out of town. Okay, so today we're going to talk about blocking a quilt. It's not for the faint of heart, I'm going to say. Uh, I didn't need to block the quilt behind me because it was wonky or wacky. But I wanted to wash this quilt to get out the print and piece fuse light. Because though it's a fiber and it will eventually break down, um, if you wash it, it's going to be gone like 80% and you won't even know it's in there. So, um, and I also decided to block the quilt to show you how I do it. All right. It's, it's not, I don't want to say it's a, it's not brain surgery, but it's also takes a little bit of finagling. Okay. So let's take a look at block number one. Um, yep. This is the part that you kind of, ah, um, I didn't have to do it with this quilt particularly, but if you have a quilt that has a ton of color in it, at a minimum, throw in some shout color catchers. And also you might want to put some Senthropol in there too. Uh, also, I, I just put in some laundry detergent. Uh, I use the Tide Pods. Why not? So this is my washing machine. It is not energy efficient. I had one of those, it broke and I got rid of it. I wanted one with an agitator on the inside and one without lid lock, okay? And I don't think down the road you're even gonna be able to get things with lid lock. Uh, I guess they're afraid a baby will stick their head in there. And I don't know. But um, I like the agitator because it really moves things around. Now, if I had a family at home with a ton of kids and all that, I probably wouldn't get use this one because it is not um, HE. So I like to work on my design wall most of the time. This design wall is a material that is no longer available called Celotex. But what's more important is that on top of it, I've got this flannel grid of which we do sell this in the store. And I want you to look above my right hand. I knocked myself out to make sure when these boards were installed on my wall that the lines went straight across. And that, that line that's going down where the um, Celotex meets, I tried to keep that square as close to two inches like the other square. So I am going to use these lines to help block um, to help block the, uh, to get the quilt square. Sue, do you acknowledge all emails sent to you or is there an understandably not enough time? Sue, I try. I, tr I really try to do that. Um, I really try to acknowledge. I don't want to, I don't want documentaries from people, okay? Because I, I more than that, it's because I have dyslexia. <laughs> so, okay, let's say you don't have a design wall like this. This was my, this is my second choice. Um, in our living room, we have Persian carpets, a Persian carpet. And within the Persian carpet, there's a grid that I can align to. So that helps me square it up and get it in straight. All right. But let's go back to the design wall. All right. I use T-pins to pin it in. I think as a Celotix is getting older, it's getting harder and harder and harder. Look where my pin is going in. It's actually going into the background. Don't do that. You want it to go in the ditch or the seam, or for lack of better words, yeah, the seam. And then look at how the T-pins are angled away. This really, truly, truly, you are going to be uh, wrestling an alligator on this, all right? And you're going to see how funky this quilt got and then how I whipped it back into shape. And I think one of the reasons it might have gotten really funky, well, let's see when we get there, um, is because I did not pre-wash my fabric. And that's a whole nother discussion that people have very strong feelings about. Okay, so here I've gone from the left top all the way over to the right top. Now look how on this side it's it's bowing in. Let's see, how do I do that the other way? It's bowing in. 
okay? And I know it's bowing in because of the grid. So I've got to get the um, line that's going down as straight up as possible. And this is when wrestling the alligator comes in. I mean, look at this mess. This is going from the upper right down, okay? The upper right down. And I am pulling and pulling and pulling. I mean, honestly, on this one, I thought, oh my gosh, what if I can't get it right? <laughs> this is the one I decided to block. So you can see, well, you can't see because you weren't here, but with a lot of effort, I got that bottom right parallel to that vertical line. Now I'm going to work all the way from the bottom right over to the bottom left. And you can see now how it's bowing in. But that's okay. That's what it's going to do. Oof. So I decided on the last side, I would pull out the center and then work from there. And there we go. Sometimes you will end up with um, a really funky corner and then you've got to get in there and make it right. Now, is this the best blocking job on the face of the earth? No, because let's look at the top. That's where I started. Look how it's like bumpy and wavy. I should have probably put in double the amount of pins. All right. But I'm not going to distress because what I'm going to do, it's still stretched behind me is I'm going to take out all those pins and the, and the quilt might go like this a little bit. I'm going to take it to my steam iron and I'm going to steam the edge and then that will help pull it all in shape and get rid of the little holes, etc. So in other words, I'm going to manhandle this thing like there's no tomorrow. So why block a quilt? Well, let's say the top is to an inch less than the bottom, okay? Um, you might want to get that top out. One caveat, you cannot block a silk quilt. It will not work. My question is, how wet is it on the wall? Did you dry it at all? Oh, did I dry it at all? No, it was, yeah, it was, it was wet. It was, um, it was, oh, let me tell you really what happened. I put it in, in a gentle cycle. It came out. And I went, okay. And then all of a sudden I realized some of my um, ink had not disappeared from the ink that I used to prepare the daisies. So I went, okay, baby, we're going to have at it. And I put it on a regular cycle. I filled it up full of water and I put those th three things in it, center pole, color catcher, and a little bit of detergent. And it took it all out. I let it go through the spin cycle and then I have at it. It, it I'm telling you, it's hard work, but I think it's hard work because I didn't pre-wash my fabric at which would have pre-shrunk it. So that's, you know, one of those things you have to, whatever. Yeah. Do you have to re-block after your every wash? Do you have to re-block after your every wash? Hmm. You'll know if you have to block it. It's a great question. Cause I'm thinking Deb Silva made me a quilt that's on my bed, on our, on our, bed that we sleep under and I she gave it to me at retreat it was a red and white house quilt and Paula had quilted it Paula Reed and they brought it up to the hotel and they washed it and the red ran all through the quilt and so then they got out the centropol which we also sell in the store you should always have some in your cupboard um, and it got it out and I don't think that one was blocked. You'll know if your quilt needs blocking, okay? I mean, is it the first thing I run to? No, but if it needs to be whipped into shape, yes, I will. And Ricky might say, yeah, you should block all of them. Okay. What if it's just a quilt for use rather than a wall quilt? Will it be showed if it hasn't been blocked? Probably not, Kathy. Uh, my main intention here was to get that product out of those daisies. That was my main intention. And again, to show you how to do it. So let me see if there's some other questions. The quilt is still wet here, right? Well, no, behind me, it's dry now. It's dry, but, um, <laughs> you know, it's funny. 
because you let it dry overnight or whatever it takes in your area. I had a black and white jumpy stinky dog named Liz Lizzie. She would, had no decorum about her in any sense, but she knew when I was blocking a quilt on the floor in the living room, she better not walk on it. Now, how she got that memo is beyond my comprehension. <laughs> And even my cats, the same way. Somehow, they knew, do not go across it. Uh, okay. Okay, I am going to uh, say what Sue said, Sue said, that Lilo did a Zoom guest, um, was a Zoom guest with her guild, and she was terrific and showed lots of photos of redoing your studio. Everybody at the meeting enjoyed the event. Love her ideas for organizing. One of you wrote in to me and said, can you do something on storing quilts? And so I put it forward to Lilo and we're going to do that for a um, one of these meetings because there's a lot of different ways to do. Okay. So Christine says she's always pre-washed her fabric and never needed a block. I just tug the quilt into shape a little when it's mostly dry. I'm a true believer of pre-washing. See, that's the thing. There's two schools of thought on that. And the only reason I don't pre-wash is because most of my things are made for patterns. And I want it to be as pristine as possible. But if it's red or purple or hand dye, that's a whole nother discussion. You're nuts if you don't do it. Is Centropol and Color Catchers both options or they use simultaneously? You know, Becky, I use them both. I just throw them in, you know, just throw them in. You could start You could start with the Color Catchers, but just why not have that Centropol in your laundry room? Just why not? And if you do it once and the color hasn't come out, do it again. I had one quilt that I had to do three times. Yeah. I usually partially dry a quilt in the dryer before blocking, so it's not so heavy. And only uh, block or show or wall quilts. Is the Celotex affected by the wet quilt? No, Sue, but you can't even get Celotex anymore. So um, I, I usually do based on the floor, but yesterday I thought, do I really want to be crawling around like that? I mean, really? Okay, Judy, you're asking a good question. Do you wash with hot water? When you are trying to remove dye, excess dye from a quilt, say red, it says on the instructions of Centra Paul, use hot water. And I'm going to tell you a little story about Paula Reed because I did a quilt that had um, hand dyed yellows. And you don't, you, don't, you don't have to check yellows. Oh, wait, did we just miss the word hand dyed? And so when I was working with it on the frame, I would mark it with a pen and then use water to get rid of it. And the yellow started migrating out. And I was like ready to have a heart attack because this was hand applique. And so um, I called Paula and she said, just finish the quilt. She said, and then you're going to go use a washing machine with an agitator, which is why I replaced my high energy one with one with an agitator and you're going to put in centropol and and you're going to use hot water and she said and you have stick it in there with hot water with an agitator as if you aren't agitated enough right now and um it worked so i think each quilt has its own criteria but always read the instructions of the product uh, Jane said on the uh, bottle, there'll be directions. It's teaspoon per yard, but check directions. I always just pour a ton in, okay? Okay, what's the difference between Centropol and Retain? When do you use each one? You know, Retain, I, I don't use just because I always use Centropol, but this is how Ricky describes it. Centropol, re when the stuff migrates, the color, it gets in there and it, eat, it eats it for lack, like pack them. Retain sets a color. So maybe if you were doing hand dyes, you might use retra re retain. I don't even have it in my house because I, Centropol is my go-to. And I'm not down talking retain. I've just never had 
the need for it. And obviously, if there's two products, there is a real reason. You might want to Google it and figure that one out. Okay, so this, Sandra Paul removes, retain, retains, which is basically what I said. So would you use that for hand dyes? Probably. And that's another thing. Boy, I'm on a little soapbox today. Um, when you, when... When you, what was that other thing? <laughs> when you purchase hand dyes, always, always, always wash them in your water because where they prepare cherry wood, they have different water. Where Ricky prepares his, he has different water. And then I get the fabric and the chemical makeup of my water is different. So the water may affect the dye differently. So understand back to my yellow hand dyed fabrics in the quilt, which I thought yellow is not going to run. Oh yeah, it did. Um, I th Ricky says he only uses retain, but he works with hand dyes. So there you go. There you go. That's why you take different classes. So on Monday, I hope you guys are busily working on these little, um, adorable flowers. I'm going to show you a trick that I did before I applied it to the background itself. Um, so Celotex, Pat says, is a rigid wall insulation. You can also use the pink stuff. I also used something that was blue at one point, and it kind of bothered me, but you know, as Libby did, go to Home Depot, put a pin cushion wrist thing on with pins and go and poke material and then go home with what you want. Okay. So, hey, have a great weekend. Um, I plan to sew and we have a baseball game tomorrow morning. So that's fun. And um, we'll see you Monday. You might want to get your hands on some monopoly thread that's clear. If you're going to go buy some Sether Paul from the store, throw in one of those Monopoly threads that's clear because I think you'll have the best results with that when you are applicating these um, different colors of petals together. Okay? Okay, that's interesting. I would use Retain of new fabric before it goes into a quilt. Once it's quilted, I might use Sether Paul. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. <clears throat> Have a good day, you guys. Have a great weekend. It's going to be 80 here. I can't wait. Bye-bye.